Welcome to Pixel Composer on Point 20.4. This will be the first release of 2026. It's quite packed with a lot of new features, so let's get to it. First, we have the 3D set origin node. So this node will reset the origin point based on the mesh information. So it can be useful when you have an output on a surface extrude where the origin point may not match the mesh position, right? Like in this example, I use it to recalculate the mesh center to use it in the scene effector node to create this animation. Next, we have a Markov node. So there are two Markov nodes called Markov and Markov Gradient. What it does is it will basically match and replace one surface with another. Like in this example, we have a chain of Markov nodes. The important one here is these two canvas. We're basically replacing a pixel with an empty space below it with a new image with that pixel go down. And it creates some like red tail at the end there. And when we put it in a feedback loop, you will see that we will be creating some falling sand-like animation like this. And this Markov node is a lot more powerful than this. You can also use it to create like a dungeon generator that I might talk about it in the future video. Then we have a number of nodes related to matrix. If you use matrix a lot, then this update is going to be useful for you too. Then we have a tie set support for the Asprite importer. And then we have improvement on the already existed node. Like we have a new pie chart type for the drawbar graph. Then on the different grid texture, we have more option over the texture transformation. And then we have the canvas type dynamic drawer. So this one is actually made to use with the Markov node. And what it means is that in the surface selector here, if you go to the dynamic drawer, you will have this new canvas, which will basically just allow you to draw directly on inside the node itself. And on the user interface improvement, there are a big new feature called custom panels. So this will allow you to create custom panels for your node. This is just a basic example. We have this custom knob to control the rotation now here, and we can also have some slider. Right, and if you go inside the custom panel area here, in the editor here, you will see that there are a whole new editor for creating custom panels. Uh, this is definitely going to need its own tutorial, right? But yeah, you can just, just create your own custom panels to customize your workspace even further or just for decoration or for fun, like in the example. Then we have a UI improvement on the loopback system. The loopback system refers to stuff like the feedback system or the loop system. As you can see in the inspector here, when you property have a loopback, it will show the loopback icon and it will highlight the property names. And in this loopback icon, if you right click on it, it will also display the property inside the loop itself. For the loop node, you can control the repetition amount. So you can do that directly from the node itself. And the last thing here, you may already notice that the 3D viewer now also have a 3D array selector. We don't have that in the past. So now if you have an array of 3D objects, you can now switch between each of them. The preview image it actually uses the texture. It doesn't render out every single object. It can be a little bit confusing in this case where every single model uses the same texture, right? But at least you can now select different index inside the array. And as usual, we have a number of bug fixes in this version that I'm showing you on the screen right now. So yeah, that would be the first release of 2026. There are also other or like optimization stuff as well. You may notice the project loading time should be a lot faster than before. So it's quite a release to start 2026 with, but it also because I spent two weeks on this, right? Normally the beta build is just about one week apart from each other, but this one takes two weeks because you know, the Christmas, holiday, new year, stuff like that. But yeah, that will be all for today's video. So thank you everyone for watching. Special thanks for all the Patreon supporters and see you in the next one.